Welcome to Shoot the Breeze, a series on a podcast that celebrates the messiness of life, relationships, and Christianity, featuring my wife Lacey and myself, Nathan. It's creatively titled because it will be just us shooting the breeze, uh, sometimes with guests, while occasionally saying something important. We hope you enjoy. Lou, come here. Lou's fine. Oh, are you taking her collar off? Okay. Well, folks, thank you so much for... <laughs> we're t- we're, we're ha- Lou, Lulu's right Lulu's Lulu's joining. Lay down. Lay down. Lulu's joining us for this episode. <laughs> she is. So it's she me, Nathan. So you went ahead and got started, right? I did. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm Lacey. <laughs> yep. Hello. And this is Lulu. Uh, well, I'm. Yeah. I'm glad we're kind of downplayed today because mm-hmm. I am definitely sporty spice. I didn't try at all with say, my you're... appearance. Your yeah. attire is downplayed as well. Definitely. If you are, if you have the privilege of watching the video. <laughs> yeah, it looked terrible. <laughs> I, so what happened is I decided not to get dressed up today. By dressed up, I mean get out of my exercise clothes. So. <laughs> well, you guys, okay, so for homeschool, you guys did a deer day, right? We did a. Yeah, and not it wasn't National Deer Day today. It was just Steel Deer Day, which means drop everything and read. And that basically just means that I read out loud to the girls and then they read to themselves and they build forts and we have a laid back day of reading. And I, I felt like it was something we all needed. And let me tell you yeah. what. It was. It was, it yeah. was needed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was really great. Well, good. You know, and honestly, I love that's probably one of my most favorite things about homeschooling is the freedom to do whatever we want. Like, <laughs> I mean, there's obviously things you want to teach them, right? Math, reading. Yeah, I mean, right, right. You want to get to those eventually. Whatever. Science. <laughs> No, but it, that's one thing we were passing, you know, where the girls used to go to school and Ari was like, man, I miss going to school. So she's telling me about what she missed about it. And I said, she would also, and I said, remind her, remember how you come home filled with anxiety. And she's yeah. like, oh yeah, I don't like that. And then we got into how, you know, we can do, we, we've taken a lot of field trips you know, with them. And she loves that. And so she really started seeing, she's like, I'm going to be homeschooled forever. (laughs) So she was like really into it. But that was what I was going to say is one of the great things about homeschooling and homeschooling, you know, especially, I I don't know, your kids' personalities and what they need and, you know, whatever. It's freeing. It's freeing to be able to do that. Yeah, I I definitely consider it a gift that I'm able to do that and that we're able to make that work for our family. I know that that is a luxury. Um, yep. So, yeah, I'm very thankful for that, and I am thankful for our deer day. It was you know, a good day. You dressed down for this podcast. I did. My hair's all frizzy. And I <laughs> dressed up for it. You did not dress up. You're I wearing did. your gray shirt and your blue jeans. And yep. What, did you slick your hair back? Is that what you did? I did something to it. You, you kind of like <laughs> it's it doing. To the side. It's like, I call it the wave. It's very nice. Do you remember? As okay, you actually wouldn't remember this. So I have a cowlick, okay, and I remember doing multiple things growing up as a kid. I, I do not remember what you did. To, okay, no, 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 right. you wouldn't remember this. No, but I, I was going to say hairstyles. Do you okay. remember hairstyles growing up? I remember trying different things with my hair so to hide the cowlick. Like right in front. It's and as a kid, you know, the style hair cutter stylist slash mom would always cut my hair to highlight the cowlick, which was Aww. cute when I was eight. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember a phase where I would part it in the middle. I remember a phase. The, I call it the Jack Dawson from Titanic. <laughs> I did I'm familiar with Jack, yes. I uh, I went full <laughs> bore into Jack Dawson. Sweet, I did. Sure. Huh? No, I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, no, 100%. I, I did multiple things with my hair. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I my haircut from when my mom started cutting, actually all my siblings, I have six <laughs> siblings. <laughs> Guys. And we had to all have our hair cut by our mom. And honestly, I, I, refu- I would not cut my girl's hair because number one, I can't. Number two, I can't. So I don't try. And um, 
anyway, my mom, I love my mother, but what she would do to us is take our bangs and cut them higher up on our forehead, maybe like halfway up our forehead, and then all the way back, back, back. Nope, you think I'm stopping. I'm not stopping. You go, 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 go behind your ear <laughs> on both sides, and that's and, where you stop. And they, they started probably <sighs> toward the back of the head, like right here, like toward no, the... No, they shouldn't start towards the back, but... Yeah, like oh, the bangs, up, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, the bangs didn't yeah, start at your so, forehead. They actually started so, toward the... Yeah, so I have already, I yeah. have pretty full hair. It's very big. And then you had like a pumpkin type front mm-hmm. to really big hair in the back. Right. And it was bad. And the, fortunately, all of us had the same haircut so we we're all ashamed together but it kind of was like a, a weird homeschool mullet thing and when I was 11 I decided I'm done I'm growing this out and so I went through a year of really thick uh, oh. headbands you know yeah. to try to push them yeah push them back which wasn't cool and I knew it wasn't cool it was really a means to an end and it was already that awkward age between yeah. you know 10 and 12 but there were there were Definitely styles in that era that were that I thought were pretty cool. You know, for all of you who are visual people, I promise to post on our <laughs> no, life page. Don't. I promise to post a photo of that haircut. Please do not. You, you know what? You have. Sorry, we have to give the people what they want. <laughs> you know, what's kind of funny is, um, and they're back in style. I'm gonna probably went out again. But um, stirrup pants were really big. Stirrup pants. Stirrup pants. What are those? They like um, they're leggings, but they have a little piece of fabric that goes down under your 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 okay. foot like a stirrup. Uh, yes. Do you remember those? I do. They went. They came back for a little while. I'm trying to remember why I remember. Did those. you have stirrup pants? Because <laughs> I. <laughs> I don't want to say yes. Oh my gosh! But I, I, I want to say it may have been. I think it was for a play that I was in in fourth grade that I was a a ragamuffin doll. That I, I was Wait like a, minute. a live ragamuffin. I doll. feel like you've glossed by a very crucial maybe third grade story hmm. that in all my time with you I've never heard. You were a ragamuffin doll in a play. Yeah. In the third grade. Star. What does a ragamuffin doll do? Is, uh, well, okay, so it was a play that um, these, is it ragamuffin? What is the one with, like, the rose cheeks? They're the sewn yeah, dolls with so. the big eyes. Ragamuffin, right. is that right? Yeah. So. Yeah, we were ragamuffin dolls. And what happens is we were, you know, tossed in this old chest with cotton balls, or not cotton balls, uh, moth, moth balls. balls. And, and we came alive. And we were bemoaning the fact that we were stuck in this chest. Wow. The money I would pay to see a video like that. Oh, I was cute as a button. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the things that I, I've done growing up, I was really cute for. Okay. I, I've really lost. I've really fallen What's off the wagon. Cute? You got to yeah. give that up at a certain point. <laughs> exactly. I feel. Yeah. Well, so. <laughs> but back to the stirrup pants. Okay. I, um, you know, years later after my tween years, I found <laughs> one of my old composition journals And in the back of it, I had kept a log of exactly how many stretch pants I had, the colors, the style, like stirrup, non-stirrup, purple, pink, black. Yeah, I had a log of stretch pants, which I, two points. First point, it's pretty impressive I had that many pants (coughs) to keep a log of. Second point. Why did I keep keep a log That's, of my pants? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I feel like <laughs> I'm pretty OCD when it comes to cataloging, mm-hmm. filing. Yeah. The fact that you kept a log. I did. A journal. I did. Of your, your well, pants. Well, the whole journal wasn't dedicated to the pants. It was just a page, but still. You had a page in your <laughs> journal of the pants you owned. I know, right? Okay. That's very weird. I feel like you've fallen off the organizational wagon. Okay, so okay. Uh, what else did you think was cool when you were younger? Um, what else were you one into? of the be- okay, or like so not into, but like what did you think? Like, 
Oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing. Okay, ever. so this is the big one, starter jacket. Okay. So start. I remember all this is all the rage back in ninety three, ninety four. Okay. Several of the cool kids in my school, the sporty ones, mm-hmm. the ones that I really, I mean, having a disease couldn't really like play with. You know, like usually in like dodgeball, either the kid who had the broken leg would get picked before me you know so why are they having the kid with the broken leg playing dodgeball that's a good question the point is it's the analogy <laughs> <laughs> so so no i but like all the cool kids would be wearing their starter jackets that their parents got them now starter jackets were like 80 90 bucks like something ridiculous right what can you remind me what a starter so a starter jacket is. is like a sports team it was okay. the sports team memorabilia jacket had a little starter on it, like a star, and it would be the colors of your sports team, your favorite sports team. Mine was the Dallas Cowboys at the time. Oh, funny. And I remember begging my mom to get a starter jacket. And I remember, I remember finally, it was like either a birthday or Christmas, or they're so expensive. Maybe it was like birthday, Christmas, slash I had to throw money in. I don't actually remember the details. Getting my starter jacket. Wow. And I was the bomb wow yeah so that's one of the cool things that i i very vividly remember i would wear that thing everywhere it really got you far socially didn't it not one iota (laughs) (laughs) pretty sure it knocked me down like i think i was the one that actually made them go out of style (laughs) they're like oh there's the Uh, sick kid all right let's (laughs) (laughs) so anyways um yeah jackets yeah Okay, so one of the things that I really loved is I had a uh, skip it, and I thought, you know, I thought I was so cool because I could I could um, whip that baby around like no one's business. I w- I had neighborhood records. I you know, and it had. Um, <laughs> did you keep these records next to your pants? I did not. I should have. <laughs> but the the skip it had. Do you remember they had the little counters yeah, they, on yeah. them? Yeah. And sometimes you could cheat and just roll it to get it to go up more counts just to kind of up your game a little bit. It's kind of it was like the original step counter a little bit. The skip it was. Don't yeah. you think? No, I, I do remember it. Yeah. And what's funny is I was the one that put it on the list. The skip it. However, and I, I would always look at people like, oh, that's pretty fun. That's cool. And I would do it a couple times. But. I was not obviously as engrossed into the. I skip was it a skip it queen, like walking down the road, skipping it. Pogs. Old school style. Pogs was the other one you were oh, into. Oh, I love Pogs. Yeah. 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 Pogs was like. Milk caps? No, not that... milk caps. They were Pogs. No, but weren't they. Slammers. Yeah, but weren't, weren't they called like milk caps? Maybe if or you're something like born like in 1925, but in my day, they were called <laughs> Pogs. Way back in 1980s. Yeah, I had like I had like a Pog booklet. Oh yeah, where the sleeves. Where yeah, you with could, the, like, the yeah, yeah, and yeah. then I'd have yeah. like different, you know, different weight slammers, and you'd go. Mm-hmm. And really, what it was was little kitty gambling circles. Yeah, because you'd go around like taking other kids' pogs, and they'd spend money, and then they gamble them away, and right. it was a high thrill. So your game, your uh, what is it? Lust for gambling started <laughs> back as a child. <laughs> Oh, no, it's my good gosh. to know. Okay, yes, Pogs was my um, <laughs> gateway. Your gateway, gateway drug to, to lottery. Yeah. To lottery. I bought one lottery ticket in my life, I mean, and he's, like, <laughs> acting like I've been, like... <laughs> going to Las Vegas right, every exactly. weekend. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, Never. and so um, I also would... Um, uh, the Pogs. I'd also... I got really... Even though I wasn't into sports, I got yep. really into... Um, Sports cards. Which is really like random. Football cards, baseball cards, beca- because of the gambling aspect. Like, you buy the pack, you know, you buy the foil pack, and then you would open them up, and if you got, like, a one worth a lot of money, it was really exciting. You are one of those who you could care less about the subject matter as long as it made you money or got right. you stuff. so I had a Dan Marino card worth $70. I bought, like, a hard plastic case for it. <laughs> That was like my that was my crown jewel in my collection. It was like in those little mm. plastic shoe boxes. And I just 
I had like an Emmett Smith. I had all kinds of. Ooh, Emmett. I might have had some Brett Favre cards too. Ooh. Like I had a good collection. Yeah. And you know what? I left home. Gone. Gone. You know what's funny? I, we could be retired by now, hon. It, we could what, be done. <laughs> you know what's funny? So I'm not very sporty. <laughs> we could be retired and done. Uh, that was my yes. plan. <laughs> right. Off of your baseball and pogs. <laughs> baseball cards and pogs. You know, top, ironically, ironically. Top Flight? Hold on. Top Flight? That's the main, like, card printer? I don't know. I was going to say, though, that ironically, I have, I still have the pogs, but not the baseball cards. I, so I'm not very sporty into sports. I've had to pretend most of my life. When I remember this one t-shirt that you bought me from, like, it was from uh, Old Navy. Okay. And it had a it had Ohio State on it. Yeah. And I, yeah. I mean, it was a t-shirt to me. It right. covered my naked <laughs> It wasn't a torso. religion. It was no. just a, yeah. <laughs> and so I remember I was on a plane and someone stopped me in the aisle and they're like, yeah, Ohio State, Buckeyes. And I'm like, yeah, sports team. Like, I... Uh-huh. I didn't even know if it was baseball or football or what. So I've had to pretend. I remember collecting baseball cards and football cards mm-hmm. growing up for the exact same reason. Is all of kind the of other kids. Cool. Yeah, all of the other kids. Well, it gave me a talking point because I didn't know what to like. Yeah, sports team. Score that field goal unit goal basket. And uh, it was just it literally gave me a talking point. And these kids would be like, oh, yeah, Emmett Smith's record, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, Emmett Smith, I got his card. Like, I had no idea. Do you what... still have the cards? Because that could mean something. No, 100% okay. threw them all away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably had like a rare one. And I'm like, so, uh, it's a piece of cardboard. We actually it away. had in our neighborhood. So I lived in this little neighborhood and in like a few blocks away was this little shopping district and in that district was a little um card store called upper deck do you remember that how they had the little like yeah there was top um, flight and upper deck like there's like those were the but no this was like a guy's little store no i know but upper deck is the printing company or the production company oh really well maybe it was a franchise i don't know but it was his little store and he sold cards and he sold pogs and he sold all that kind of stuff so we could go there like as kid, you know, mm-hmm. back in the day when your mom let could let you go run around in public, and they were perfectly fine. Like I remember being twelve and my mom sending me to the pool for the afternoon. Yeah, right. like go have fun in the pool, take your siblings. Right. But um, yeah, so we go one time, and they are supposed to be opening at four o'clock, and I was with about three of my preteen friends, and we're waiting around and waiting around, and they the store is not open and i remember we like scratched out a letter on a piece of paper expressing our disappointment <laughs> you would. That, this, that. Goes back to, this goes back to the yelp review yeah, totally. i am disappointed I, at you I, you advertised this time you did not show up so the, the next time we went the owner like it was so funny because i think about it now as an adult the owner like profusely apologized and he had something serious like I don't know, his brother in the hospital or something like that. But he was really sincere about... I got the Spanish flu, but I'm so sorry, little girl. I will not let any disease from now. He's probably like one of the guys in Michigan who's like, I cannot close down my store during COVID. A little child many years ago. Yeah, it was a whole group of us. It was like four or five of us that were very um, passionately disappointed. (laughs) Oh, so, word. Yeah. So funny. Man. I, I remember tinted glasses. In fact, I wore tinted glasses in one of my uh, yearbook photos. I've seen that photo. They're very... Uh, Thankfully, it no longer exists, that photo, and I can't show you guys. Oh, yeah. You threw out all your yearbooks. You wouldn't let me keep them. No. Weird. I didn't think it was weird. It's like... They serve zero purpose other than taking up space on a shelf. Remember our conversation about being a minimalist? Literally throwing out Listen, everything that doesn't... I have told you for years I am not a minimalist. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. This is one of the many resources we make available for free at our website, cultivaterelationships.com. Our resources have helped people grow in their relationship with God and others. Uh, we've seen people set free from uncontrollable anger and paralyzing fear 
we've witnessed estranged family members be reunited after working through our freedom booklet. We've helped people build healthy relationship and coping habits through our coaching videos. And all of these resources are made available for free because of the generous support of people like you. If you would like to become a partner, please visit cultivaterelationships.com slash support. Now, I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. So when, I don't know if you have heard of what a human video is, but um, it is a ministry tool in which you take a popular Christian song and you you don't sing or say anything. You act out the video with a team. Um, the very first human video I ever did was in Peru, which makes sense. Like in a <laughs> stop laughing in a um, like a third world nation where you're trying to communicate. You don't they, know the the language. Like that yeah. makes sense. Like and they love <clears throat> in in other countries they love it they were genuinely well 20 years ago i don't know yeah. how they feel about it now but i mean they still love them <laughs> okay still so like them. i remember i was in one we did one called come you know come just as you are you know that's a pretty popular one mm-hmm. so but i was bit like bit with the human video bug yeah and i could not get enough and so somehow <laughs> along the way my value as a person started to get wrapped up in whether or not I'd be chosen chosen as lead for <laughs> these human videos. And thus began a journey. I was part of an AG youth group and they were big believers in the human video. So you AG know, is the assembly of God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I was not chosen for, well, maybe, maybe on like in my own youth group. No, I was in my own youth group In my own youth group. I was like the bomb. I was not the bomb. There's no, but I was, lead in the human video right because i was willing to do it right so (laughs) got it okay (laughs) kind of like i gave the speech at my graduation it was like i won't i'll get back to the human videos but it was a collaboration of homeschoolers that got together and gave the the um gave a graduation ceremony and you were chosen to do the speech i was not chosen i volunteered (laughs) But everybody thought I was something special because I gave it. But I just volunteered to give it. So Because <laughs> nobody else wanted to. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So <laughs> with the human video, though, I, when I went, I, long story, but I ended up changing my plans from going to um, this college to go to a ministry school. Oh, I was going to say your plans from becoming a famous human video actor. No, I never had those plans, but it was part of the reason why I chose to go to this particular ministry mm-hmm. school because they d- you they did a lot of human videos. Right. It was like their they were AG S- ministry shtick, school, right? Yeah, like yeah, shtick. it was a, a master's yeah. commission. Um and I was just thinking like man, I am going to be able I'm going to rock this, right? So I show up mm-hmm. at this place and sure enough, they use human videos left and right. They're always doing human videos. Right. Everybody's doing human videos. Do you know who got, do you know out of like 130 people, there was only two of us in the two years I was there that never got picked to travel or do anything and, or be in human videos. And you know who those two people were? You. Me. <laughs> and somebody else. <laughs> And I was just like, nobody knows, like, <laughs> for you know years. What's okay. You know what's so funny is, to contrast Lacey's obsession with human videos, I had issues saying no. Mm. And so I thought human videos were ridiculous. Always have. I didn't mind being in them, but always thought they were just ridiculous. Well... I was asked by some kids in my youth group to be a part of the human video. Now, I was like, I couldn't say no. I had issues saying no. I had issues telling people no. Uh, Whether people pleasing or whatever, I didn't. I needed to gain some kind of like people wanted to hang out with me. They thought I was cool. So they asked me. So I was like, hey, I'll be cool for you. Like, I was not obviously a cool kid. Just come out with it. What did you do? Anyways, I had to do human videos. You didn't have to. I had to because the people wanted it. They wanted it. to. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I did human videos 
I did human videos to testify to love. Uh huh. Can you I, show me the hand motion? Because for the video <laughs> crowd, can I see it? I love seeing it. Do it. It's, it's you. You gotta testify. Yeah. <laughs> and then dance, you know, like yes. that. And <laughs> the idea of you being on a stage doing a human video is almost more than I can take. Like. I, you think I'd pay a lot of money for the other video? The it was amount a lot of, of money for this who, video. Who did? Um, it was really like one primary band that we would Avalon. Really, Avalon, yeah. Yes. Uh huh. I would always. It was like all these Avalon songs that I have in my brain. Anytime I hear them on like K Love or Christian radio, like it sends me into. Um, oh, I like I want to like black out. See, in my ministry school that I was in. If you were if you were one of the popular kids, you always got chosen for the human videos. Like you were always the lead <laughs> in the human video. And you were like this was not me. These these kids were super cool, right? And they were just really expressive, a lot of emotion, a lot of drama. And the thing about it is the ministry school I was in was partnered with a youth group. Mm-hmm. And the youth group would do increasingly dramatic big things to try to um invoke emotion mm-hmm. i guess is the best way to describe it like right. for example so we did a huge conference a leadership conference and you ever heard the song and he ran to me no um basically i i can't remember who it's by but it talks about the prodigal son and how the father comes running okay well at the end of the song they had people planted all over the audience in this you know, auditorium and people just started randomly standing up next to people and running towards the stage. Really? Yeah. Babe. Yeah. And so you had to like, I was actually, I got to be part of that one cause they used everybody, but you well, yeah, had to, yeah. So you'd, ha- you go into the auditorium where everybody was sat for this conference. You'd be like, excuse me, pardon me. I got to sit here. And they'd be like, what? My friend isn't like, no, I got to sit here. And then <laughs> at the end you'd pop up and run towards the front. Yeah, so that's an example. Did so, other people run towards the front, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, like, a hundred of us. No, no, no. Like, did random audience, like... No, no, they are all plants. But they made it seem like just random people were running. Babe, that's horrible. That wasn't my idea. But it's horrible. I just did what I was told to do. <laughs> Guys, okay. <laughs> no, it was very dramatic. Well, okay, but well, my, yeah. my favorite one... My favorite one... Okay, there's... I have so many... So, I can't even... The amount of stories I have. The people, here's the thing. The people who could care less about human videos have checked out. No, people are loving this. No, they're, no. I have one they're, more story. I have okay. one more story. What, what, go. Okay, so we did this huge <laughs> leadership conference where they'd have all the youth leaders and everybody, and um, they would do human videos. for the Human videos were really what the, kind of the source everybody drew from for stage events. But they hooked somebody up with a zip line. In okay. the corner of the room, kind of like in this darkened corner of the auditorium. Okay. And they started playing, um, you know that song, I Believe I Can Fly? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo, yeah. You know. Um, R. Kelly. Yeah. Of, of Space Jam fame. Right. Oh, I love Space so, Jam. at a certain point, they zip the guy out on the zip line over the audience with his okay. arms out. Of course. Flying over to the, to the lyrics of I Believe I Can Fly. Wow. That was probably the most extreme human video example I, I could possibly get. <laughs> we have spent <laughs> so long talking about human videos. Okay, but it's, I don't feel like people are bored. You know what I'm we've saying? Ex- like, no, I feel like if they were sitting here, they the could subject. be like, baby, I don't even think you realize how much more material I have on human videos. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure you'll let me know. Okay, we're going to move on to a, a segment, mm-hmm. a whistleblower segment. Again, we did, we just did whistleblower. Yeah, I know, but this is, a, this is a, here's the unique thing with this whistleblowing, blowing of the whistle on us. Okay. Is that it, I'm, we're blowing it on b- both of us. So we both were telling it for both of us. Yeah. Like this is, this is, 
a Nathan and Lacey. This is. This is something we do. Shameful. Okay, I see where the angle you're yeah. coming from is. So what happens is... As a, as a couple, yeah. this is our shame. What happens is Nathan and I will get to talking and dreaming and envisioning an idea. Mm-hmm. And Ministry, business. Anything. Anything. Like one time we had a really lively discussion about starting a dog kenneling business. Yep. It was one of those times we were thinking about just being done and moving yeah. on. And the girls got really excited. They actually started they're, to cry. Yeah, they're actually kind <laughs> of disappointed. We, we yeah. weren't going to do it. We were just talking. But anyway. Fun fact. I love training dogs. Yeah. It's like, it it's so soothing to me. And I'm really good at it. BTW. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but generally what happens is we talk about an idea and the very first thing we do is buy the website domain like it's about 10 bucks and we're just like well if this idea pans out we don't want to lose our right domain fun fun fact is <laughs> like we we've purchased space on servers and so all we have to do is purchase the url right and then we 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 can we can <laughs> have that guys we We've people had, we've had a lot people listening we have had so many we've had even like multiple for one business so we own a production company we had scionstudios.com we had scionstudiosgroup.com we've had scion video scion graphics scion photo photography you say, lacy you might still be saying, photography you might be saying what's scion and my my thought is with you and i you know my thought is you asked Nathan because he was really dead set on using Scion for. Okay, so here's a name for a we've media company. loved. So here's why is we've loved trees, all the way back, and a Scion is like a shoot, an offshoot. Um, yeah, I feel anytime you got to give this long of an explanation mm-hmm. for a name though, it's like. Well, mm-hmm. you know what's funny is our current logo is a tree. I know is a tree, full and circle. it has throw yeah full circle. full circle. But guys, so many websites, you have no idea. I had so a hard many. time giving up Lacey Steel. Yeah, you did. We had LaceySteel.com. Mm-hmm. We have, we currently have NathanLaceySteel.com. Did Experience Cultivate expire? Yeah. That one expired. Yep. Because we were. We have Cultivate, and then we shifted to Cultivate Relationships mm-hmm. so people knew what we no, were No, we never had Cultivate. No, we had Cultivate. Because Cultivate's owned by William Sonoma, and they No, not anymore. Oh. Now they're. We uh, were, like, um, watching it like crazy, but. No, Cultivate.com was originally owned by, yep, William Sonoma. Then one day, because I kept, like, spying on it. Yeah, I know. What is me it? too. Yeah. And all of a sudden, now it's an le- online leadership development tool. But if they're too simple websites, yeah. what they do, they buy them. People come and they buy up domains. Yep. And then you got to buy them for a lot more money. So, I but I don't know why that's part of our business. I'm doing air quotes. Mm-hmm. Business strategy is first step is. Website. Buy a website domain. Because <laughs> it's smart. It's, okay, we're, we want to make sure we have a good, like yeah. another one is NLS.com. Yep. So I've been, I've been stalking NLS.com for years. I mean, this, at least a decade and Northern Lake Systems will not <laughs> give up NLS.com. No, but this is what I see as a sign of maturity is what last time we had a big idea and I said, let's buy the domain. And you said, wait, let's wait. Do you remember what that idea was? <laughs> what was it? I oh, I don't remember. remember I don't either. even remember either. We had, well, we had multiple. <laughs> we had, uh, it was, I thought it was, uh, oh, oh, oh. What was it? You were wanting to do like antique, like refurbishing of furniture and stuff. And you're like, honey, I can do business cards. So you printed up business no, cards. No, that was before the one I'm talking about. Oh, I already really? did that one, yeah. And you wouldn't let me buy a website for that one. Yeah, no. Because we still have 500 business cards not Listen, given out. that was for diff- that wasn't antique stuff. That was um, jewelry. Yeah. No. It was, was heritage, jewelry. it was Heritage and Hope. It was my, yeah. jewelry, my business for my jewelry name. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of stuff that I did. But I, I didn't. Okay, so you're probably th- sitting there thinking, <laughs> wow, these people have a lot of trouble with follow through. That's not it. <laughs> no, I would like to say, I would here. What you have to do is look at the positive. You have to look at the positive side of this. Is we're entrepreneurial. 
doesn't mean we're entrepreneurs. We're just no. entrepreneurial. <laughs> exactly. Those Maybe. are two different things. I don't know. I feel like there might be a lot of judgment right now, so we might want to move on. Side note, we have a lot of business cards for different things. No, we only ha- right now I only have Heritage and Hope and you only have we only have Cultivate. I've really streamlined. Good job. So, yeah. That was our blowing the whistle on us ourselves. Yeah, there you know now. It's our it's our shame. It's our secret shame is we <sighs> We like to buy domains. We like to buy so many domains. Finally, in 2020, I pulled the trigger and uh, deleted a majority of our Yeah, we domains. got rid of a lot of them. We, got we? A, we, had, to, we had to downsize because we weren't <laughs> using them. <laughs> well, they would redirect. They would, right, but I mean. Mm. I, know, I know what you're yeah. saying. Okay, so I want to move on to pet peeves. I feel like this is just you confronting me about something. No, it's me confronting everyone around me. Oh, I see. Everyone. This is, here's the thing. I'm going to throw so many people under the bus you on can't this. can't use names. I'm not going to use names. Okay. No, 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 no. But they know who they are. <laughs> but they don't because they're obviously not listening. Well, they wouldn't respond to even if they were. <laughs> okay. I hate when people, and you know what? Email is the same. I hate when people don't respond to texts. Texts. I hate it. It's a pet peeve of mine. I don't like it. You can do a thumbs up. You can do a heart. You can do okay. You can do anything to show that you got a text. Doesn't it say red? If you have that turned on, if you have an iPhone. I see. Yeah. So here's the thing. I have people around me in my life who, you know... One will be unnamed, specifically. I'm also married to this person who has, like, what is it, like, 52 unread texts? It's like 148. From years. Listen. Years, people. No, this this is not accurate. So let's say you're having a text conversation with something, somebody, and their last text to you is, okay, sounds great. I'm not going to open it. I can read it in the preview, and I just move on in my life. I ain't got time for that. No, 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 no. I got any time for but that. But then, then your your texts get f- filled up with all these unread texts. No, they're just. And they're then like, and the, so like, how? Why? <clears throat> that's the thing with texts Listen, is they make don't phones have to... with so much memory now. It doesn't matter. Am I really going to use 128 gigs on my phone? I'm not. No, here's I'm the. I'm not going to use it. Here is the genius of texts. Let's say you're in a meeting. Let's say you're busy. Let's say you're going to the bathroom. You don't have to call the person back. Right. Right. You just can press K. No, but if the yep. conversation's done, if I say okay, I'm going to go, and they say okay, sounds good, and they send me a text, mm-hmm. do I have to say, wait, I need to say some closing thing to you? Do not leave me here. No, you just if there's a question. Or a, a statement of action. No, okay. I, it's no. You don't. Ha- you don't have to respond to everything. If you've closed a conversation down, it's done. This is turning a, into uh, an agree to when, disagree. No. Whenever, whenever somebody sends me something and I know they need a response, I respond. But if it's something that's just kind of like hanging there that doesn't need a response, no. Those of you listening, uh, you can chime in to which or group text. Group text? No, I don't. I'm not going to respond. I can. I literally have too much going on to deal with group text. <laughs> this has now shifted from a pet peeve to agree to disagree. Feel free to respond to this podcast and let us know your thoughts on texts. Ooh, text etiquette. Yes, guys, send us your text etiquette. Like what? what? Just should like someone a list do? of things? Just a list. Just a list of text etiquette tree. Etiquette tree? Etiquette-ness? What would... Et- etiquette. etiquette. You don't have to add Okay. Letters. Just kind of like you don't have to add responses. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. You have to respond. I'm not saying you don't have to respond. I'm saying that if the conversation is done, you don't have to go on and on like somebody star for a relationship. Like, listen, I'm done. You're done. Move on.
I remember a uh, book that we read a while ago. It was like the, what is it, the Generation of Facebook or something like that. Do you remember that? Church of Facebook? No, it was like the generation of Facebook. No, it wasn't a Christian No, one. the one you're talking about is the called Generation MySpace. I oh, Generation I, MySpace. A while yeah, ago, yeah. as in 12-ish yeah. years ago. Right. Um, but it, it was, was talking about, right, way. it was it was the social, how our brains have been wired through social media, essentially, to do different things. And I feel like the generation now that doesn't return texts is based off of this the do you remember before there was text and if you didn't want to talk to somebody you just didn't pick up the phone yeah like yeah. i remember how amazing it was when caller id came to be oh yeah because then you could just be like no nah, i'm not picking it up wasn't it was it star 68 star 69 you could star 69 you could call someone back yeah. Is that right? Yep. <laughs> but like before caller ID, you just had to, you had to decide if you wanted to talk to somebody or not. And then your phone would ring forever. So if you didn't want to be bothered, you just unplug it from mm-hmm. the wall and nobody had a heart attack. They just kind of went on with life. Mm-hmm. And then answering machines were mm-hmm. a really big deal because you could not pick yeah. up the phone and still know who called. But then, I mean, yeah. the biggest the biggest game changer was the caller idea yeah. ID, which actually one of your nicknames comes from caller ID because we have friends who had caller ID and they would, as you called, it would say Nathanatal Steel. Oh yeah, 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 Nathanatal yeah. Steel. Steel. And so then, it, yeah. So I call you Nathanatal Steel. Yeah. That okay. So that is one of my nicknames, Nathanatal. Nathanatal. Because yeah, that, that's right. <laughs> Because my name is Nathaniel. Uh-huh. Like, my full name is Nathaniel, and it's spelled A-E-L. It was hard for the robot. Yeah, so the robot was like, Nathaniel. <laughs> now, what's funny <laughs> is a more recent nickname is Mr. Stelstel. Yes. Because I once received mail for a Mr. Stelstel. Not only did they not get my first name right at all, they didn't even spell my last name right. And they doubled it. And they doubled it. Yeah, I think Mr. Stelstel is one of my favorite nicknames, honestly. Yeah. Okay, so books. Uh-huh. I was trying to do a, a sneaky transition there. Like, you read that on a paper and books are in paper? <laughs> no, no, no. The transition was talking about how people who don't answer texts or respond to texts... Are probably reading. ...are, uh, as a result of social media and the book we read, and now the question it was a is... a terrible transition. I love you, but that's a terrible transition. All right, really quick. <laughs> Last book you read and Why? A regret or a red? Red. Oh, okay. That's a totally different conversation. (laughs) (laughs) That's what you regret. Ooh. Oh, let me tell you why. Wait, 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 wait. Let's do that. That'll be fun. Last book you read and why? Like a good one. Like, yeah. And then the last book you regret reading. Ugh. Oof. Okay, last book you read and why? Okay, last book I read was from, like, from that I'm finished with would Mm -hmm. be that Reese Howells book on intercessory prayer. Who I'm currently yeah, and reading I gave that it one. to Nathan to read, yep. and that was that was excellent. That made me think a lot. Um, and just I love biographies. Actually, I'm a big I'm actually big into biographies because I think they're fascinating. Which actually I am currently reading a biography on a girl. Um, it's called In Order to Live, and it's about a girl who escaped North Korea. That and sounds like a fun one well i mean it's really good <laughs> i did have to take a break in the middle because it was really heavy and sad and yeah. i needed a little bit of levity because yeah. it was just kind of too much too much right yeah. but um it's really well it's really good yeah. you know just to to hear her story and i love hearing people's stories so mm-hmm. um you what i mean you uh, said you're I reading mean, yeah, yeah currently i'm reading reese howell's Intercessory. Okay. Intercessor? Intercessor. Intercessory great prayer. One. Yeah. Great, uh, great book. Um, really challenging, just in dealing with the Holy Spirit, all that. And the one right before that that I read, highly recommend, is Hosting His Presence by Bill Johnson, which was another one dealing with uh, how am I living, walking, resting in, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak in me. Um, and so that was a really deeply challenging for me. So it's good. Both of those. Yeah. Okay. Book you re- regret. Do you have one right away? Cause I'm trying to think. A book I regret reading. Um, oh, I don't want to throw any under the bus that I've. See, that's what I'm saying. You oh, don't really yeah. want to. 
Yeah. Okay. You know what? Ask us. <laughs> I do remember when I was younger, though. I I've always loved reading, and mm-hmm. when I was younger, I just I pretty much spent all my time in my room reading. When I oh, was I got a one. Child. I got one. And I remember picking up a sci-fi book from the Dollar Tree, which yeah. should have been a big indicator. Number one, Dollar Tree. Number two, <laughs> sci-fi book. And I read it, and I remember completing it and thinking to myself, "What did I just read?" Like, I honestly, so the minute I put it down, I couldn't even tell you anything about it. That's, That's so how funny. bad it was. Okay. I don't even, I don't know the title or anything. All right. This one, I don't actually mind throwing under the bus. Okay. Worst book I've, I've probably read. I, so I like nonfiction. I love uh, footnotes, everything. I love all that stuff. Worst book I've ever read is Pagan Christianity. One of the l- worst researched books I've ever read. Horrible Horrible conclusions, horrible research. Hmm. I do not recommend it. It's horrible. (laughs) I I can't. How you really? I remember. No, I remember reading it because I was. We had a group in our church that we were a part of that really loved it, and I'm like, fine. I got to. That was back during the emergent movement, right? Right. I got to. But it's it's created a following, and and they've produced like second and third editions and updates. Um. And I remember, I'm like, okay, the, there's a group of our college students who were, re, we were leading, reading it. So I, I remember having to read it, right, to respond. And I was reading it on a plane. So I'm like halfway through, I'm reading it on a plane. And I remember distinctly like doing a fake cover over it because I didn't actually want people to know that I was reading it because it was that horrible. It was, I, I was so ashamed of you're that actually, I was reading it. You're, you're making me think of, I do a lot for the girls, I do a <laughs> lot of read-alouds with them. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. there's a list that I work from. And we've had a few this year where I've started, and the girls, within the first few pages, decide whether or not they're going to listen or whether or not they hate <laughs> it or whether or not they're judging me. Yeah. And they'll, they'll tell me, like, <laughs> this is terrible. Please stop reading it. Or we hate it. And... um. <laughs> One of them we started was, and it might be great, but we really got in, I think, a chapter or two. It was mm-hmm. called Walk the World's Rim, and it was on the indigenous tribes in Texas, actually. And it was not painting a very good picture. I mean, they were, like, starving and sad mm-hmm. and cold, and everything was pretty dire. And I, Ari just looked at me and was, it was just like, Mom... This is terrible. I don't want to listen to this anymore. It just makes me sad. And I, I so we stopped reading that one and just went to the next one. Mm-hmm. And I've kind of tried to gauge more than, I mean, obviously I'm gauging content, but like mm-hmm. if I'm going to make her push past that discomfort right. in different books, because we're reading one now where she didn't like the first chapter and she gave me a hard time but now she loves it and she begs for me to read yeah. it so well i think you gotta kind of weigh your options right like right the series the girls really like is i survived oh, right yeah. that i mean that that's a fun series it's not written super well but it is a fun series but it, it brings up deep stuff and it's dealing with well it, i mean it brings yeah. up historical events right 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 I I remember my, cause my mom did read alouds too when we were little. And I remember she started reading the King Arthur legends by Mm. Howard Pyle. Have you ever seen those? I know about them. Right. So it's very, it's old English, very Mm. complicated, um, like diction. So if you're like reading this out loud to people, you're, you're going to get really, I mean, reading Mm. out loud makes you tired anyway, but then you have a higher (laughs) vocab (laughs) and sentence structure and you get really tired. And I remember that we were so into it. That we would, she'd try to read it, she'd try to stop, and we'd be like, more, more, we'd like, (laughs) force her into reading for hours and hours, which, you know, you know, you love it, honestly, when your kids tell you, like, we've gotten that far, right now, we've gotten that far, we're reading Johnny Terrain, and the kids will be like, well, why don't you read one more chapter, and like, okay, you know, because you (laughs) want them to be, but man, if you're the reader, you get oh. so tired. I can't yeah. imagine how exhausted my mom was because literally we had her reading for hours. That's just, so funny. We'd be playing our Playmobil or doing like more, stuff. More, yeah, more, more, <laughs> give more, us more. more. <laughs> so funny. Oh my word. Yeah, no. One of my favorite. Speaking of old English books, one of my favorite books is <clears throat> Alfred Edersheim's *The Life and Times of the Messiah*. This is not a like, hey, I'm just going to pick this up for a couple hours and read. No, it is you read three sentences and you have to take a nap. And then you read three more sentences and then you have to take another nap. 
It's so good, though. It is so good. Highly recommend it. Anyway, it Life and Times of the Messiah. Alfred Edersheim. If, if it's an, it, it, it basically dives into the all the all the customs, all the history leading up to those customs. Like it, so good. It like if you want one commentary of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, get Alfred Edersheim. Oh, and Acts. Alfred Edersheim's Life and Times of the Messiah. So good. If you haven't been able to tell already, Nathan and I have varying interests when it comes to the things we read. Well, you know what's funny? Yeah, I can't. I'm not a huge novel. You hate novel. I, I love hate novels. novels. I, it takes me. Someone has to highly recommend it to me for me to read it. What's the last novel you read? Oh goodness. I mean, do you even? I I don't remember you reading a novel, ever. Uh. I just, yeah. I mean, as long as we've been married, I don't think yeah. you've read a novel. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Three. Oh, wait. Yeah. I just had you read Animal Farm, too. Oh, and Animal Farm. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, guys. Which is kind of like. Animal Farm. Fantastic. <laughs> Three. Fantastic. <laughs> they're very different. I'm starting. <laughs> they're totally different. Uh, I'm starting. Three is by one of my favorite authors. Nonfiction. Oh, I read a lot of his books. Ted you and Decker. I together. Yeah, Ted well, Decker. We did a lot of the audiobooks when we were yeah. traveling. So good. Before we the had other children, one, yeah. Yeah. The other one is uh Animal Farm, and then I'm gonna start nineteen eighty four. Mm-hmm. Simply because of perhaps the you know, life I don't and know times why. that we're living in. <laughs> There's no reason. I've read nineteen eighty four before. Shuffle, shuffle. <laughs> I know. I've read nineteen eighty four before, but I just wanna maybe revisit a refresher. it. <laughs> refresher. Little refresher. Which kind of fun fact. So when I was younger, uh, my mom, she was new to homeschooling. I think I was like 13. Mm -hmm. And she basically was like, Lacey, you're a reader. I think this would be good for your homeschool is just to read all the books on the top literary list. Like 100 horrible novels that are on the literary list. So, you know, she didn't really she hadn't read them. She'd read a few, but not all of them. And so just, she just had me working from this list. So I remember really specifically reading The Fountainhead by um, Ayn Rand. Or Ayn, Rand you, Ayn Rand. I don't think you would say Ayn. I think it's Ayn. Ayn? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I remember reading that and being like, whoa, 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 mom. <laughs> hmm. I don't think you know what's in this book. You know, <clears throat> there's some good <laughs> writings by Charles Taze Russell <laughs> and Joseph Smith that I can interest you in. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the, 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 <laughs> it was interesting and I was old enough. I mean, and I've always been more of a thinker. So I was able to separate myself and what I believe from what was being taught in the book. But she's such a, she was such a good writer that, I mean, there was a cult that formed from her beliefs. Hence because my joke. I know, I understand. <laughs> okay. I'm saying, what I'm saying though is that just because it's considered literature doesn't mean it's good. Good for your 13 year old, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, we had. <laughs> Man, we had so much more that we were going to cover today, but this was good. Are we done? I mean, I are we so. at the end? We have to be. <laughs> <laughs> we can get into it. We can get into more later. I, I really like talking yeah. about reading. I've realized I, I could do. I know. I could do Here's, a lot more here. We have not. Here, the, one thing before we go, because usually we we maybe cross a path that has something to do with seriousness. No, we haven't. And we didn't do that Mm-mm. today. Um, Except for, I mean, I am kind of serious to make sure that you know what your 13-year-old's reading. I think that's important. <laughs> that and responding to texts. Those two things are, I would say, the key <laughs> points of our conversation. Uh, no, so I, I want to recommend, we have on our podcast, we have uh, episodes labeled teaching. Mm-hmm. And they're just teachings that we've done. Um, so I just recommend maybe peruse, maybe peruse those episodes and uh, pick one and you'll have a serious. Well, you just did uh, a really good teaching on how to share your story and why it's oh, important yeah. to share your story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just posted a week or two ago. and Yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. yeah so I highly yeah. recommend listening to Check out to that, that one. one. Yeah. If you want to be encouraged on, you know, sharing your story. Like, yeah. Question, to... Do I have a story? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. All those testimony, whatever the subject that deals with 
sharing your story, why it's important. I think that's the thing is why is vulnerability and telling your story important? That's a good one. Yeah, go back and read that or read that. Listen, watch. Okay. <laughs> it's dinner time. I am ready for food. <laughs> fading. Huh? Fading fast. I am fading. Hey, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Yep. Goodbye. Goodbye.